Welcome to the Best Hour of Their Day podcast with your hosts, Jason Fernandez and me, Jason Ackerman. With more than 20 years in the business, as both coaches and affiliate owners, our passion is to help create world-class affiliates and coaches by building better boxes. boxes. Welcome to the best hour of your day. Welcome back to the best hour of their day podcast. We've got two special guests. We've got Goruck on here, the official sponsor of CrossFit and the 2024 CrossFit Games. And to talk all about that and more, we've got Carrie Hare, OG. You've been involved in CrossFit as long as I can remember, project manager for Goruck. And then Jimmy Letchford, president of Go. That doesn't make, I don't think that's accurate, Jimmy. Is that accurate? You're president? Yeah, I, I don't know what they're thinking over here. <laughs> that's a, they didn't tell him what he was president of. They were just like, we're just going to give you this fancy yeah. title. I'm just going to throw this out there. We've all seen other sponsorships not work out in the CrossFit space. This this is the beginning of the end for Goruck. Jimmy's president. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> Everyone can pop some popcorn, crack a beer, and sit on back. Also a legend. I mean, both of you... We'll talk about your relationship with Fern because you guys both Naval Academy grads. But Carrie, how long have you been involved in CrossFit? I started CrossFit in 2008. Yeah. And tell us about your journey because I feel like you're the one of the people that any event I'd show up to, you would just be there. But I never knew exactly. Like you, I know you're like maybe in media, you were, I, I'd show up at HQ in Boulder, you were there. I saw you. Remember a couple months ago, I ran into you at that little local competition, um, but you're you're just like always there. That's that's it. Uh, yeah, um, very much jack of all trades was around in the early days of the, uh, the CrossFit HQ office, uh, or the the second office, if you will. The first one was uh, like a law firm uh, in Scotts Valley, California, and yeah. Um, Started there and literally was in media, events, operations, you name it. I think I've touched all the departments. Ended in affiliates, um, building affiliate programs. And uh, yeah, exited that and entered GORUCK um, just before the games last year. Well, what do they say? 90% of success is just showing up? How's you? I mean, that's what you can tell people that were going to a CrossFit gym, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> How about you, Jimmy? You were just also one of those guys. Always, I want to like say you were back at like my level one, level two. You were just around back way back when, like two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I found uh, I found CrossFit in the military by our buddy Lance Can too. Remember oh, Lance? Yeah. So you know, oh, I didn't know. Yeah, he, yeah, I didn't know that Lance introduced you to CrossFit. Okay. Yeah, well, I was Lance was in my platoon when I was a young lieutenant, okay. and you know I came out of wrestling all those years, and you know like we were just getting ready for deployments, and I just got fat and was trying triathlons, and you know we did ground fighting and all this kind of stuff in the platoon, and he's like, hey sir, these workouts are crazy, but you should check out CrossFit, and I did, and uh, you know it was like no looking back. But yeah, that was, those are early days. It was like 2000, well, I knew Lance in 2004. So it would have been like 2004, 2005. That's what I say. This is like really, really early, like 2004, 2005. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And then, um, yeah, just continued on. I mean, and got sent to a seminar by the Marine Corps and met Greg and Dave and Nicole and a few others there. And uh, the rest is kind of history for me. Yeah. I remember when I, cause I started career off in 2007 and then. I don't remember what I saw. I might have been like a journal article or maybe an old video. And I was like, oh, shit. I was like, it might. No, there was some video that it would like had to do with like you guys. Some sort of co-op with the Marine Corps that CrossFit was doing that you were in. And I was like, oh, shit. I was like, there's Jimmy. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Like, there he is. That was Operation Phoenix. Yes, that's right. Okay, got it. Operation Phoenix. Now. Yeah, yep. that was like okay. one of my first projects at CrossFit. That's you cool. guys didn't overlap at the Naval Academy, though, did 
Did you? Yeah. yeah. Did, we, did we overlap? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> did. Yeah, we were there at the same time. I would yeah. say we overlapped. <laughs> like, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Inside jokes, Carrie. I don't get it. Uh, but, uh, I no, I'll, no, I'll tell you. So, like Jimmy, Jimmy and I. So Jimmy's a 03 grad. I'm an 04 grad. So he was a year ahead of me. Um, but we had a lot of mutual friends. So like Scott Long, who was played basketball. Um, Here was we go. Like he was like right next to me. Like we sat next to each other. He's he was actually one of my groomsmen at my wedding. Also really uh, close with Jimmy and good friends with Jimmy. So Jimmy and I found ourselves at many of the same extracurricular activities shall mm. we say. jimmy give us give us some dirt give us one dirty fern story no you i can't was, do I that would, yeah that's not how that works yeah yeah nothing can't. not in public it yeah, doesn't have to even, even that. uh, that's fine you just ruined we it. went to scotty's wedding and that was a whole lot of fun let's put it that way that's um, oh that was that good <laughs> hey fern was was I won't talk about I, it. I think, was, thank you for bringing back those memories, by the way. Yeah. Was, was Jimmy around for the incident? Uh, no, no, no. That was in supply core school. Yeah. Okay. That was after. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get back to. <laughs> there was, there was many incidents that Jimmy was there for. Uh, <laughs> so, so talk to us about the relationship with Go Ruck and CrossFit. This is, you know, was announced recently. Like Carrie had told us, you're the sponsor of crossfit that's a huge deal uh 2024 yeah. crossfit games i'm excited we were saying how we're going to get outfitted by goruck on seminar staff and our mutual friend brendy was saying they are the most comfortable shoes she's ever worn um yeah i, I will i listen i've never given anybody a shout out on shoes just because literally they just give us free shit so like but people are like hey what are those do you like them and it's the first shoe ever between all the Reeboks and all of the nobles i where i legitimately am like they're com they're really comfortable and i wear them every day yeah i mean we're not gonna bash companies but nobles are highly uncomfortable <laughs> right like I, not i've not met many people that were like try these they they, they make your feet feel good it's yeah. always like i have to wear these for 12 hours my feet hurt um <laughs> yeah i mean i look appreciate all the shout outs and they're here's the truth they are and I've been around for a very long time, right? Um, and I've I signed the Reebok deal, right? Found it, signed and negotiated it, and we, you know, with with help of others, not just me, but like, you know, I've been around from the Nano Ones to all the way to the Xs and the X Fives and the X Seven Tens and whatever the fuck they were. But like, you know, the the the, the Go Ruck shoes that we make, they're great and they're comfortable and they're, but more importantly, they're durable and they're technically sound. You know, I mean, the, those shoes will go for a long time. And if they don't, we'll replace them. <laughs> it's like, that's... You replace them? Yeah, if any kind of like, you know, if it's within any kind of reasonable time period and like the sole starts coming off or something, like that is number one, not acceptable. And we ask them for them back and get them to our factory. But two, it's like not to our standards. Like we build everything so that you can beat the hell out of it. Um, and with lifetime guarantee on our rucks and anything like that. So... Um, I've, I actually just had my, not just, maybe like six months ago, Scars sent my ruck in. You know, they stitched yeah. it up, but they sent it right back. Yeah, that's really cool that you guys. Jimmy, how long? We, we call it the Scars Lifetime Guarantee, right? Like, right? So I'm in a closet. We call the champagne room. This is like an office, very kind of, very go ruck authentic, right? But on the other side of that wall right there, there's 12 sewing machines that are working, you know? prototypes and concepts we get a lot of people send rucks in for customization you know because they just love their ruck you know and at the games you see it and we're seeing it more and more people coming up stopping at the booth and being like dude i've had this ruck since 2010 i did this event at this place with these people and all this and you know they don't want another ruck because they love theirs and so yeah, they, they customize them you know jimmy how I mean, long have you been at go ruck um almost three years now oh wow so it's been I, yeah it's been a now. little bit the i i'm curious so when i when i knew you transitioned over there and then i was watching this kind of evolution at least to me like as an observer this feels like probably the most natural fit that i've seen you in as from a job standpoint I, but is that accurate yeah it's very accurate you know like i mean look i got really lucky 
coming out of, I mean, I've got a good education, right? An economics degree and basically a, a minor in general engineering. You know, you've gone to gone to war a bunch of times, led Marines in combat, like you come out and like total package. And I went over to CrossFit and uh, my old man's like, you're going to go work for some fitness fad, you know, but like all that time, like really was, and I'm like, dad, I think this thing's going to be big. And he's like, yeah, okay. I think you're making a mistake. And they, you know, him and my mom ended up opening an affiliate, you know, about five years ago, but it's funny anyway. Um, yeah. And, but all that time, like was just on the job training, right. It's just ma- making relationships, learning things about business, finding good people like that, it, that became longtime friends. And I got this opportunity, you know, I mean, Jason and I bumped into each other the year this, that uh, the games had rucking for the first year, you know, and the, the athletes were doing iterations and coming back and put more weight in or whatever it looked like. And we kept in touch and he's like, I want you to do more with me. And, you know, we'll go, I'm like, yeah, dude, any, anything you need, brother. And he's like, we just kept talking and talking and, you know, I ended up over here, man, um, doing a contract first. And I love these people. You know, I love this brand. Jason and Emily are great people. And they built a great culture over here that I'm honored to be a part of. And like, it is a collision between like what I love doing is being a part of a great brand and growing a great, great brand and the military and fitness and community. Those things are like, what I want to do for the rest of my life. And this is that. So yeah, you're right. It's that's cool. It's a good fit for me. That's cool. Well, on that note, you, you started three years ago. What's, you know, we wanted to talk a little bit about role models and leadership with you, Jimmy, because you've been really all around everything in CrossFit. And now, like we said, you're, you're president there. And You've gone through the Naval Academy, like you said. You've been to war. We we would just love to hear more about, you know, who some of your best role models have been and leaders in your life, and what made them great role models and leaders. Wow, yeah, we went heavy, um, right? You know, we did we did some research. Shout out to Cody. We don't want to just talk about the fluff stuff with you. You've been on other podcasts. I can go find. Yeah, that. I mean, I've had some moments in you know, like all throughout the years. Um, and you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing because I wasn't prepared for that question, but I, I've got one because this has been kind of a monumental, um, thing in my life. Right. I grew up wrestling, you know, from very early age and anybody who's been around me knows that. Um, but like, that's, I've never told this story out in public. Thank there was a coach and I called him up last year. In fact, called him out of the blue. I haven't seen this guy probably in, well, it was 1998, uh, 1999. I hadn't seen him since 1999. I called him out of the blue. I found out where he was. He was at, he's, he's an athletic director, I believe at Canterbury. Yeah. Up in, up in, uh, the Northeast. His name's Jim Stone. All right. And this is a minor moment in, in like real history, but not in my history was that I was playing on a football team at Blair Academy and Blair if you know anything about it I was in the foundation program Fern uh, before going to the Naval Academy yep. Did Blair you wrestle Academy, there? I wrestled there yeah that's a huge yeah. yeah huge wrestling school huge wrestling and great wrestling I mean just like I mean to this day I mean the best wrestlers going into college are coming out of there and a handful oh, of other schools yeah Every single one of the kids and guys on my team went to a division one college and started, you know, so that was that, yeah, it was that kind of, it was that kind of college, but that kind of place, but I wanted to play football. I mean, honestly, I would not have wrestled in college if I could have gotten a a football scholarship somewhere. I just love it. You're not much bigger than me, Jimmy, right? You're what, like five, eight, five, seven. Fuck! You wait, uh, hey, you're not five eight or five seven. <laughs> no, no. As I was saying, I, I was. Listen, I'm I glad was you brought that up, Jimmy, because yeah. he wasn't no, so much trying to bring you down in height as he was trying to yeah. bring himself up in height. Yeah, that's I right. didn't notice. I was like, that's much taller than me. But I'm saying, like, point being, like, I'm five foot nine. Are you five nine? Yeah. 
Okay, I was gonna say though, if someone saw you and you were like wrestler or football, they'd be like wrestling. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I've wanted, I always wanted to be bigger than I am, you know. But I, I, I played football at Blair, and we were national prep champions, right? We were undefeated, and I'll tell you that Coach Jim Stone was one of those moments for me, right? And, um, and, and it were one of those coaches that just like really set things on a different trajectory for me. I was one of the running backs and a linebacker, um, and we were just hard nose. I was just a hard nose runner, right? It was just like get the ball, drive it down the field. It was there was no finesse really in in the way I ran, and and uh, and we knew it. We and we played to it. And we had the other tailback um, who was he was fast, uh, went on play Colgate. Uh, but anyway, there is a moment in one of these games in order for us to move on and to to play in the national prep championship. Um, we were, it was, it was, uh, fourth and 10 and we were short time in the game. And, um, I went, we were trying to decide what we were going to do. Maybe we can get the ball back. Maybe we couldn't or whatever. And we were on the side of the, we were on the side of the football field. And here was the moment I looked at coach Jim Stone and I go, coach, give me the ball. And he looked at me and he looked at the rest of the guys and he goes, the guy wants the ball. He's getting the ball. And we went on, picked up the first down. We ended up winning the game. We ended up going to the national prep championship. Now, very, very small moment. No one would even remember who we played in the national chip prep championship or whatever that looks like, right? But for me, it was one of those things where it came out and uh, you just go, you got to want the ball in life, you know, and, and, and you got to want to go for it, right? And I called Jim Stone up there last year and I called him up and I was like, Hey, Coach Stone, my name's Jim Letchford. He's like, I remember you. And I was like, I'm going to tell you a story that changed my, my life forever. And he's like, I remember that exact moment. And I tell other kids about that exact moment. Right. And so, like, a leader like that, whether we won or we didn't, it was one of those things where it's like he had such an impact on my life. And he, he, gave me the ball, right? And he's probably given a lot of kids the ball since then, proverbially, right? And so Jim Stone's one of those leaders. Jeff Buxton, who was the wrestling coach, one of those leaders. Joel Sharrett. You remember Joel Sharrett, Fern? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you a story about that one too. I mean, Sharrett was a good example. He was a beast of an athlete. You're talking four-time All-American at Iowa. 190 pound wrestler, just, um, you know, just, and one of the real founding members of the Marine Corps martial arts program. Um, he wasn't a Marine, but he was a contributor. And, uh, I was marching tours for, I don't remember what at the Naval Academy. <laughs> that, that means and, Jimmy was in trouble. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I, I was, it was the middle of the winter marching tours. And like, when you march tours, what you do is you walk in a cir uh, square square or a, one tour is one hour. And I think I had like, I don't know, a hundred tours or something. I can't remember what it was about. Yeah. It was like, and I was so ready to like, I'm kind of like, what am I doing here? You know, I could be trying to wrestle at a different college or whatever and, and everything. And I, I told Joel, I was like, I don't know if I can make it here any longer. I was like, I don't, I don't want to do this stuff. And I'll tell you that morning after morning and i'm talking like you do your tours before all the formations and stuff so it's like 4 a.m in the morning yeah, it's early as fuck it's cold outside and and it's cold. cold you're tired you've you have been a stupid fucking old m1 rifle <laughs> yes and you walk slow in a square and i i told joel that i was like gonna i was ready to leave and i'm just kind of trying to figure out how i'm gonna do it and every morning for i can't even tell you how long at 4 a.m., I would see a guy sitting on a bench, sitting on a bench in the shade or like where, where the lights from, uh, um, you know, the uh, King King Hall and Dahlgren yep. Hall and everything were kind of reflecting down. I still can look right across the way and seeing uh, this dude sit, sitting there. He'd be sitting there with his hands in his pockets and I'd finish my tour and he'd get up and he'd walk away. And it took me a while to figure out who that was. It was Joel. And Joel was there marching the tours with me. It was pretty fucking, it was pretty impressive. Um, just, just good setting the example, you know, 
mutual suffering kind of guy. So um, what, so those are both really cool stories, by the way, the, uh, and I could absolutely see how those would have significant trajectory impacts on your life. When you think about what you're, what you guys are doing at Go Rock, like what are some of the things that you bring from those into Go Rock? Because like you meant you you spoke to the culture piece there, and culture gets thrown around quite a bit, and it's annoying to me because I don't think I don't think that many people have great culture. But what do you what do you bring from that, or what do you try to bring from that into Go Rock from a from a culture standpoint? Well, I mean, look, I. I personally believe like, and it kind of sounds cliche and all this stuff, but I do believe that like leaders, you know, they get, you have to have like really good leaders know how to love very well. And that's not like, you know, like, yeah, you got to love your wife. I love my wife, you know, dearly. Right. We just finished 20 years, by the way. Um, Wow. Congrats. congrats. Not finished. Not finished. We time's up. Honey, we made it 20 we're out yeah on to, the, right. on to the next one <laughs> yeah no no we we just hit 20 years two weeks ago in fact to the day. it's like a uh, tour you did a tour is that yeah i did I did. it's like you marched in the square for 20 years <laughs> yeah but you gotta like you, you gotta love right like you gotta be able to love who you're who you're standing shoulder to shoulder with leading or following like there's a lot of that involved in in leadership and followership right and you know, you're not, you got to know how to follow to be a good leader. You know, they say that, but like, you got to know how to follow and you got to know how, like, you have to be loved. You have to have, um, I think there's a lot of opportunity for when you're following for you to have those moments where you get the ball from somebody and you go, I love that. Like, I love how that, you know, affected me. And then you reflect that down on other people. Right. And so for me, like what I bring I guess to go rock is just like, you know, I love these people. I love this brand, you know, like I care about where we go and how we do it. And you know, the, the lives we can change through rocking and everything. And it's like, my job is to empower these great individuals that work here to, you know, help build better people through whatever that looks like. Right. And, you know, I love, I just love doing it. You brought up something there that I think is really important. And you and I have had many offline conversations. I've, I've, you know, we t- we've talked business, we've talked other things, but what I really appreciate about what you guys do and the conversations between you, Jimmy, and, and you, Carrie, and anybody else that I've talked to over there is like, that how you do things is really important. And yeah. it's not just be like, hey, we're going to go, we're trying to do this. But, you know, you know, we've had some pretty candid conversations where 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 it's just like, we're not doing that because that's not who we are. Yeah. And it's like, because this is how we do things. And that, and that holds true for you guys. And that's what I've, that's what I've appreciated about every conversation I've had with you guys that is even remotely close to business or even, even remotely related to business is like, Oh, these are, these are people that really, really care that really, really mean what they say when they say, Hey, this is how we're going to do something. It's not just about what we're doing. It's about how we do it. And that's what's really cool because I think I think there's a great opportunity in the space, particularly the CrossFit space, for people like Go Ruck to set an example there. And I don't think that is um, I don't think it's insignificant. Yeah, you know, Carrie can talk a little bit more too. But I mean, look, through the years when I was doing the sponsorship stuff through CrossFit at CrossFit and everything, and then you know partnerships around the games and things like that and and just whatever i moved on to next right people would brands would always be like hey man what's this like how are you successful and it's kind of like man you gotta you gotta just keep showing up you gotta be a part like that's the biggest thing about this community and any for that matter you know like you can't do it from you, you just can't do it from not being there and not you know sweating and hugging and drinking the proverbial beer with the people, right? Like that's, that's what we do. Right. And that's how go rock will be a part like this, you know, this partnership for us is not really about like trying to move product, you know, like, yes, we're in business and yes, we're growing business and everything, but it's my relationship with Dave 
you know, it's my re relationship with the affiliate owners and Don Fall and, you know, you, Fern, and everybody, like, in five foot three Jason over there, like, we, <laughs> this is, this is very natural for, my, for us. Like, you don't, I, personally, I don't go into the relationships with like, hey, here's the end state of this, right? It's, it's a lot of the process. And right. what makes this really unique, like to Jay's question at the beginning, he's like, talk about the partnership. And I'm just like, dude, we, we get to come out, hang out, throw some rucks on our back work out with really great people that are engaged and yeah, they're going to touch our product and yeah, they'll eventually buy it. And yeah, our shoes are great and people will talk about it and all that stuff. We know that will inherently happen, but I'll tell you like our marketing team, although good is not really focused on how we can sell trinkets to CrossFit people. It's not it. It's like, how, how do we show up? Like we're Carrie and I were out at, at Dallas last year or last year. Last week, we were in Fort Worth at Dickie's, which is an in amazing venue, by the way. That's like, cool. Amazing venue. And CrossFit is putting a lot of effort into making the experience great. I mean, I'm telling you, I've been in that venue before, but I've never been in the underbelly. And it, wow, it's going to be a really good year. That's but cool. Like, yeah. The, um, somebody else was, uh, Oh, we were talking to, we were having some conversations, uh, APN stuff, and they were talking about like some of the setup. And I was like, Oh, I was like, I'm getting a little fired up about this. Like, this sounds badass. It's, it is badass. And the whole area is amazing. I'll tell you, Fort Worth, uh, sports commission is on steroids and they're really good and they're really fun. And the, the, the outskirts of the venue, like, yes, in walking distance, but um, if you, you know, if you've got a car, or you can take an Uber 10 minutes in a, in a large vicinity of that area. There's stuff to do everywhere. Food's right. great. Music scene's awesome. You know, like you can get a great steak, you know, like you can hear some great music. You can dance. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. But like what we're doing right now is like, uh, like how do we show up and activate? Like that's what we're talking about. Like, and it's not like what's our booth going to look like? Because if everyone's expecting GoRuck to just show up and try to pedal, you know, product, it's probably not going to be like, you know, it's not what you're going to see. You know, you were likely going to see us running rucks and throwing sandbags and working with the fans and the fan experience and all that kind of stuff. Because at the end of the day, it's like, I can put all of my resources into an infrastructure and making sure size larges are on the rack, or I can bring 40 go ruck employees to do the things with the people and hand out the beers. And you know, which way I'm going. On that. And I think that's a lot of what's been missing in that space with the, with sponsorship, with the marketing and CrossFit, it's always I say always, but oftentimes it's felt like, Hey, we're here because we want to, infiltrate but you know get into a new market we have to recoup and, our investment yeah and you know and it never felt authentic yeah and i think this is also one of the first sponsorships where a lot of people are already using the product mm -hmm. right like in the past it, it was like oh we've got this new company and then crossfit benefits them where like you're saying we've i've had my gr2 10 years and Brittany had those shoes long before there was any agreement there. So, you know, I think we're, we already see the value in the company and, and that's, a, that's a little bit of the difference here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like you're right. And that's kind of like where we're, where we're positioned, right? Like it's not, we're not doing it because we think it's the best way to talk to the community Although I, we do think we recognize that that's probably going to happen. It's the way we do things, you know, it's the way we do things. And it's the reason why actually we are the partner with CrossFit and like, look, CrossFit, I'm so tired of listening to all the rhetoric on the outside. I really am, you know, and, and, and to be quite honest, I, I have re 
re-engaged with it recently because of the CrossFit partnership. But to hear like all these people having, you know, everybody's got the best idea for how this, you know, what they should do for us and all those stuff. It's kind of like, you know, I, that's, yeah, we, we just need to level set on that, I guess, is the best thing. But like, you know, we just know that this is who we are and this is how we do it. And CrossFit recognizes it too. And CrossFit like had opportunities to go with other brands, but they went with us because they recognize that in this category, in this category, we're, we're good for the CrossFit community. And I think that's of note for, and, and, and kudos to CrossFit because they could have taken some big ass check from somebody who's just going to pepper billboards all over the place and not understand what CrossFit is. I mean, it's out there. It's, you know, this is, this is a great community with great people and engaged consumer and, you know, but they didn't, they went with us because we did show up and we are raw and we do, you know, drink the proverbial beers with the, with the community. Right. And, and the uh, real ones and the real beers and the, and the real ones. On that so, note, I know you guys, I know we wanted to at least touch on a little bit, but the, the kind of the affiliate partnership that you guys are working on. And this is, I think more of, of Carrie's swim lane, but can you guys speak to that as, as much as you can, at least at this point? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, when I came on board, you know, Jimmy and I talked around how do we, how do we do the right thing for the right people? You know, that, that old sentiment. Um, and the people that are owed the most in this community are the affiliate owners. And, and secondarily to that, I think the, the seminar staff, um, you know, I mean, maybe not secondarily, but like on the same plane, right? Like it's, it's those two huge groups of people that help build this community to what it is, you know, out there doing it daily. And so how do we support them best? Um, and also like looking at previous partnerships and thinking about maybe where our balls were dropped or resources maybe misallocated, but like. We, we just knew what we wanted to focus on those, those groups. Um, and I think what that will look like, um, is still being determined, but we know, we know the angle we want to go with, with those folks. And it's, it's to, um, be a lot of things for them. Uh, and I know that's a little vague, but as we sort through the details, I don't want to like overshare here. Um, kind of spun up some things, but we always have the ability to um, get out to events and help support. And we've kind of created a funnel for that. Um, for, you know, I, Jason, I think you and I saw each other. The first CrossFit event I'd been to in maybe like five years. Um, yeah, yeah, that's cool. But it was like that, that piece of the community, I think was lost for a little while. We were like, I know people were doing those events, but it, you didn't feel that that culture that was, that was happening that like people got excited about. I walked back in there and I was like, oh, I haven't been to one of these in forever. And you know, you get the, the hairs stand up on your on your arms as you watch, you know, the you know, for us it was like I was watching a 70 year old from Cross Your Roots that was absolutely crushing. She had no idea she was just out there with the, like whatever the masters category, which was like 35 and over. She had no idea. So she was just in it, but it, like she just showed up and she was amazing. And like seeing that and being able to recognize it, like we know that's out there, right? Because Jimmy and I and several others are CrossFitters, and like we just know what's out, happening out in the community, and we want to support that. I, I can tell you guys what I've uh, it, specifically you carry. One of the things I appreciated because you and I had conversations, probably I think last year at the games, and you too, Jimmy. The questions that you, because we get questions all the time, right, about like about affiliates, right? So it, it, there's no shortage of people coming to us and asking us like, what do affiliates need? Like, blah, blah, blah. But the questions you guys asked were different because the questions were not like, hey, what do affiliates need? Or like, what can we provide to affiliates? The questions were, what is best for affiliates? And most people probably wouldn't recognize the difference between those two questions, but I fundamentally understood the difference between those two questions, which is we're not here to siphon revenue off of the affiliates. We're here to provide value to the affiliates 
that is that is mutually beneficial. And that's what I appreciated about the approach that you guys took. It's the it's the approach that that you guys have taken with any interaction with us. And and we and we have made very uh, clear that like we want you guys to feel the same way when interacting with us in any capacity is what is best for the other party. And if we can if we can have those conversations then it's probably a good deal, like whatever it is, like whatever we come up with, it's probably like a good deal. If we start from a standpoint of like, what is good for you? And yeah. if I can deal, if I can, if I can generate that, then this is that, that win-win scenario that we're looking for. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we're, yeah, nope. you're, you're nailing it. I mean, because it's not to us, it's not about transactions. Right. And I mean that like both, I mean, we make product, right. And we sell a lot of it on goruck.com and goruck.eu by the way we launched that last week um but like we sell a lot and there are a lot of those transactions but like transactional relationships are they're dirt like they're not worth a thing you know and like it's it's one of those things where we, we realize that because it's who we are it's what we build our brand on and like there's a lot of brands that would pay for what we have you know like you know, a lot of brands would love to go back and have experiential real relationship marketing and real relationship interactions like that can't do it. I mean, I'll tell you that, you know, like pick any, any kind of, uh, you know, pick a product. It doesn't matter. An energy drink, if you will, or whatever it looks like. I mean, and just putting cans in people's hands, it's like, there's no real relationship there, right? There's no real, you know, you know, kind of it's transaction i have this i give it to you and there it was kind of thing and like what we do and what we will continue to and always do here is is not have that we won't be transactional it will be very much you know like how can we can listen we're small we're nimble we're really aggressive and we can listen to what's on, out on the streets and then we can we can make movement i mean i'll t you know you talk the, you know, the OODA loop concept, right? And John Boyd, look it up, you can nerd out, geek out on it for a long time. And any a lot of military people have heard about it, but if, I don't have to go super deep into it, but I talk to my team about it often, probably to the point where people start rolling their eyes I, if they don't, if I turn my face. But, you know, OODA loop and it's observe, orient, decide, act, right? Like take an observation, you know, orient, yourself on like where are you like and this comes from fighter pilot right dog fighting mm -hmm. yep. you know um observe orient where am i as a you know in in relation to the thing make a decision and act and those who can do that fastest are the most you know they you know, is have longevity in in whatever that is now when you bring that to business you know a lot of the big brands that are only looking for the transaction you know don't have a fast OODA loop because it's not about that, right? It's about like, how can they get product in front of somebody to get a tr transaction where for us, our team knows is that the magic is going to be with these affiliates because they are, and Chaffee was making fun of me last week about the heartbeat, but like, I've been saying that long before Chaffee even knew what CrossFit was, dick. Um, but it is, it's like, we know, right? So, you know, like, we have a relationship with them, you know, and we can listen to them. We, and our OODA loop is really, really short and, you know, it's gonna, it, it'll pay off, um, in, in the long run because we have relationships. So Jimmy, I know what OODA loop is, but in case any listeners went over their heads, will you just explain, I would explain it, but you should explain it. Well, here's the bad yeah, part so that he actually did already explain it. You just missed the, no, he said it very quickly and okay. I, I caught it all. Like, I don't want to, you know, I caught it all. You look up, look, look up anybody who wants to geek out on this. His name's John Boyd, O-O-D-A, Loop, right? And he was a fighter pilot, and he wrote a, a bunch about this concept. But if you think about old dogfights, you know, dogfights being jet on jet, kind of going after each other, and they're all upside down and around like this used to happen. Happened in World War, in the World War II, and happened, you know, throughout you know, when, when the jets got faster and more sophisticated, but, you know, when you talk about that in the sense of fighting and, and dog fighting in this case, he had that, that concept is like the person who can 
observe, like first, orient themselves on the observation, right? Orient, and then make a decision and act on it. The, the faster they do that, you're doing it faster than your enemy, you're going to be more survivable and you're going to be more lethal. Now you can take that to business. That's, I take this to business just to say like, hey, like, what is it that we can do like in our observations and orient ourselves on what our capabilities are and just make a decision aggressively. And like, I tell the team that like, you know, and you can wait around forever for a hundred percent solution and you're never going to have one. You can wait and wait and wait and things will never be perfect. Never not buying a house, not, you know, having kids, not, you know, it kind of doesn't matter launching a new product or whatever. It will never be perfect, but at 80% solution, if you have, aggressively attack it it's going to be way better outcome than than waiting around for the 100 percent solution because you're just waiting you know yeah. so that's yeah. cool that that yeah, yeah, yeah that's, and that's great. You know, observe you, orient decide, decide after. After. i like i've like, yeah. been up here what, what i do wrong with you fern is i bring you ideas but i only give you like 50 percent of the solution i need to give you 80 percent well 50 percent <laughs> is very generous but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's usually it's usually a fleeting thought that is only partially formed i'll uh, do this i'll be like i have an idea and then marcus and fern will be like have you considered any of this i was like no i didn't <laughs> I did not consider anything <laughs> just an idea it's an idea. i considered no things i had the thought and i handed it to you guys i i um, just did an o loop i just oriented <laughs> <laughs> I just observed, actually. It was just the uh, what? Or do you guys have any an, initiatives you guys can or want to talk about for the games specifically, or the open for that matter? Since that is happening as at least of the time of this recording, within like forty eight hours or twenty four hours, actually, almost. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, I mean the the open offer is great, right? Like, um, you know, we partnered with CrossFit to uh, if you register for the open, then you get. Uh, Get twenty percent off on the purchase of ninety nine dollars more on um, and it's through the the training collection that we have, which is all footwear, uh, the ballistic trainer, the rough runner, uh, all of our sand products, the four point oh plates, uh, weight vests. Like it's a pretty solid collection of amazing gear. Um, there's really no limit to that. So get on there. If I was gonna buy pants, what pants should I buy? Yeah, which yeah, that's a good question. Simple pants. Those simple that? pants are really good. So we got to, okay. Yeah, they're really good, man. Like they really. I was just Do they talking come in about size five foot three. Do they come in five foot three size? Yeah, no, yeah, they no sixteen. It's inch. In the, there's a it's on the size dial tab. Jimmy. I'll the, just get whatever it's, Jimmy wears. So where the same. No, I think Jay, you should just get the simple shorts because those will be pants for you. <laughs> <laughs> They honestly, I was talking with the team about this is that those things should, we should call them like the no wash pants or something like you, they are, there are simple pants, right. And, but they're like indestructible. You really don't have to wash them like for extended periods of time. Right. Like I don't wash pants. I like the sound of this. Well, <laughs> listen, this actually is making them more enticing to Jay. I can't tell you how many trips I've been on with this guy. And I'm like, that's the same shirt you've been wearing. He, for he'll, three be, days. he'll be like, yeah, he'll be like same shirt, huh? And I'm yeah. like, the t-shirt's different. The t-shirt's different, though, you know? I like this, I mean, Jimmy. The simple pants. Wait, wait. I looked it up. Oh, man. You got a 3230. I might be able to squeeze, like, not squeeze in. You might squeeze in. Yeah, you might squeeze in. I've you lost can roll weight. them three times. You can roll them three times. Let me see the bottoms. Can they be hemmed? Oh, yeah. These can be hemmed. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, but, like, Why as far I as we've got a lot of exciting things coming out, right? Like, when we did this partnership with CrossFit, like, it was somewhat late in the game and we knew it, right? But like, again, the, the go ruck is not a, let's, I'm just going to get this out there. We are not like, we're not a CrossFit company, if you will, right? Like we do CrossFit, you know, we do CrossFit. A lot of the employees do CrossFit. We have great gear for CrossFit gyms, sandbags and training vests and rucks, obviously. And we've made a shoe that's fantastic for training or coaching, right? And it, the word's going to get out on that, right? Because that's the big thing. Everyone's like, go rock. I didn't know you guys made shoes kind of thing. But like we, you know, like go rock's been very successful on just owning rucking and training and getting outdoors and doing fun stuff with people. Right. Um, but like, we've got a lot of exciting things coming 
And, you know, we want to be very thoughtful about um, jumping the gun on, on getting something out there that's not mm -hmm. up to our standard, right? So, you know, we've got a lot, bunch of announcements. I will tell you at least that, like, we will be focusing a lot about around, again, the experience, both on-site and off-site um, at the CrossFit Games, right? So make sure, like, I mean, hopefully we can come back, Fern, and we can have a lot more solid things to to tell everybody but we'll be thinking yeah about we definitely want to come down to to jacksonville and go to the shop you know mm -hmm. talk more about there but the um as you were saying like just owning rucking when i was in germany last september i was out there for the doc regional with all the affiliates but i went and spent a couple of days with mac and yeah. and uh he's like hey you just want to go we'll slap on the uh rucks and we'll just go for a short walk and i was like sure right yeah. little did i know right that 14 miles later we would be done with this short walk <laughs> i love but that, he had like he had one of those uh it was a backpack that uh it was actually a pretty slick backpack it's like fairly low profile but you just slide that uh that weight uh vest in the yeah, back the of it. carrier yeah dude it was that was a slick little setup dude and having like yeah. worn a decent amount of body armor and, and backpacks I was like this is fucking good to go dude yeah yeah it's a great piece of gear great piece of gear um but we'll have a lot more a lot more exciting news um cool. when when you do come but like hey the the you know um we're laying one good brick at a time you know and there's a lot of sausage making right now um and we're not ready to cook it just yet but when mm -hmm. we do it's going to be good that's awesome so when you go on your site you you have many products that you either sell uh, made in the U S or made elsewhere for a different price. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We, yeah, we did. I'll tell you, I mean, we made, used to make everything in the U S and the truth be told, it's got, it has nothing to do about production costs. It's really where we, we make our products. It just, it is the, the accuracy and the, um, consistency and how durable the stuff is, is really what it is. And, and capacity, right? We, we are needing to produce more and more. And oh, US you mean like production capacity? Got it. Yeah. yeah. U.S. manufacturers in a lot of cases can't meet our demand. They're not on time. They can't do the numbers we're asking for and everything. So, you know, um, we do still have some U.S. products, but a lot of them from overseas, not China. Very cool. Yeah, we're gonna make our way out there, right, Fern? When when would be a good time, Jimmy? Um, I would say, how about the end of March, like this week, at the end of March. We might be able to make. We have to look. All right, Cody, you heard it. March. Cool. Right when my daughter has no school, I'll, my <laughs> wife will be uh, very excited about that. It's funny. Hey, so our, our director of operations here, he's our, our vice president of operations, Robert Price, who's an amazing man, former infantry machine gunner guy um, in the army, not a machine gunner. He was 11 Bravo. Anyway, doesn't matter. He's an amazing individual. He went to Europe with me just recently. We had some, you know, talk about our European expansion or whatever. And he was, when we were over there, he was talking about how at his at his daughter's elementary school <laughs> they sent home like 40 kids with the stomach virus and so they shut down school or something like that and his all his family had the stomach virus and he was like it is a really good time to be on a different continent right now <laughs> the way he said it was kind of like oh man like you just said what you were thinking and <laughs> and i'm not even mad at you yeah i'm like you're probably right probably right oh, well um, this has been great and yeah we would love to get out there we'll see you in jacksonville and we're looking forward to seeing everything you guys have going on with crossfit in the next year yeah well look i really appreciate you guys first off inviting us um and then what you guys are doing you know like how this this podcast this forum is really important and i recognize it carrie i'm sure recognizes it and you know the entire community does you're you're a you're strong um, consistent voice for a community that of business owners and members and passionate people who give a fuck about people's lives. 
and their health and wellness and, and happiness. So kudos to you guys. I appreciate, you know, what you all do. Well, we appreciate that, Jimmy. You know, we've, you've always been someone we've admired and, you know, looked up to in the CrossFit space. So, uh, we, we truly appreciate that because, uh, we do it just like you guys do for the right reasons and we, because we love it. So yeah, and we're gonna try Thank to do you. as much activation with you guys at the game. So like I, I'm just looking forward to that whole thing and 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 helping you guys having a good time there, helping affiliates and uh, yeah, that's the whole game, man. So yeah, well let's you. connect. Let's connect about that because we've got some. I have some ideas. I got an idea for the games. Hear me out. That he has think... not thought of. He this is only. This is just an idea. You're going to like, you're actually going to like it right now. You're going to like it, Fern. Do you think I can fit into a GR3? Probably. You Like, I'm thinking Ace Ventura 2. <laughs> I can, all right. You know, the little like, dude that he like, he thinks he's going to fight the big guy and then he turns yeah. around with the dude in a backpack and he jumps <laughs> out. I think yeah. we could probably make that happen. All right. If Ackerman fits in a GR3, free, free GR3s for everyone in attendance. I love it. I love it. It's all about the fan experience. We can make this. That's right. Yeah, cool. Well, yeah, maybe we could do like a, a ruck meetup. We can do some cool things. Um, do all for, sorts of stuff. Yeah, for our affiliates out there. Well, awesome. Carrie, Jimmy, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming on. We'll see you in person soon. And uh, yeah, let's have a great year. Hell yeah. Thanks for checking out this episode of the Best Hour of Their Day podcast. We appreciate you listening and choosing to have us help you in your passion for coaching and affiliate ownership. You can find more episodes just like this on all podcast platforms. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach out to us on any social media platforms, or you can visit www.besthouroftheirday.com to book a call. If you found this episode helpful for you, please share it so that we can help other coaches and affiliate owners to help build a bigger and stronger CrossFit community. Thanks for listening.